Hey guys, it is so good to see you, even if we are online. I'm so glad that you are tuning in and you're here with us today. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I want you to get up and move it and we're gonna play a game together. Come on, I mean it. Get up and we're gonna move those feet. So we have been expanding our brains with all this schoolwork that we've been doing this week. So it's time for a pop quiz. I'm just kidding, your parents told me to do that. All right, but we are gonna play a game that tests all that random knowledge that's stored in our brain. All right, so today's game is called Side to Side. And here's how Side to Side works. All right, you're gonna see a question on your screen with two possible answers. If you think the answer is the one on the left, you're gonna move to the left side of the screen. If you think it's the one on the right, you're gonna move to the right side of the screen. You got it? Okay, let's give it a try. Question number one. What item at Chick-fil-A do people like the best? Waffle fries or chicken nuggets? Okay, if you think it's waffle fries, go to the left. If you think it's chicken nuggets, go to the right. Hmm, that's a tough one. I love them both, but let's see. What do you think it is? And the answer is... It's waffle fries. Yes, I love waffle fries. Okay, let's shake it off. Here we go. Question number two. So where are my cat lovers at? If you have a cat, if you know a cat, if you're roommates with a cat, if you've ever been around a cat, then you probably know the answer to this question. So what percentage of their lives do cats spend asleep? Well, if you think it's 40%, then you're gonna go to the left. If you think it's 70%, then you're gonna go to the right. Oh, wow. Cats do like to sleep. Let's see what that answer is. It is 70%. Oh my gosh, that's like living with teenagers. All right, next question. What What do people spend more time on? Is it ice cream or pizza? If you think the answer is ice cream, then you're gonna go to the left. If you think it's pizza, you're gonna go to the right. All right, now remember, we're talking about what most people spend their money on, not what we spend it on, but most people. Okay, so the answer is, this is a tough one too, it's pizza. I love pizza, don't you? What's your favorite pizza? Is it cheese, pepperoni? Do you love anchovies and olives? Oh, I love all kinds of pizza. All right, anyway, let's go to the next one question. The next question is, which planet is closer to Earth? Is it Venus or Mars? Mm. If you think it's Venus, you're going to go to the left. If you think it's Mars, you're going to go to the right. All right. I remember learning a song about this. Man, there's lots of planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, there's Jupiter, there's Pluto. Is Pluto even a planet anymore? It was when I was a kid. I don't know. Okay, well, let's see. Is it Venus or Mars? All right, so the correct answer is Venus. Okay, how are you doing out there? All right, so are you getting them all right? Okay, so this next question is for our cartographers. You know, you map lovers. So which state is furthest south? Is it Florida or is it Texas? If you think the answer is Texas, you're gonna go to that side. If you think it's Florida, you're gonna go to this side. All right, let's see, Florida, Texas. It's a tough one too. The correct answer is Florida. Awesome, I wanna go to Florida, don't you? All right, so how are you doing out there? Did any of you get them all right? Awesome, hey, you guys did great. And guess what? We're about to have even more fun. So I want you to stand on your feet and let's go worship Jesus. so thankful for the freedom that we have in Christ today. Let's stand up and let's worship together. One thing that could truly change all the wrong in me is relentless love. Jesus lifting every shame from an empty grave where death was undone. a million chances you get
With you, my past, it has to fall. Now I'm chasing eternity.
that was amazing, wasn't it? Hey, there is nothing like being able to jump up and down and just have a good time worshiping Jesus together. Well guys, it's a new month and you know what that means. We're talking about something new all month long. We're talking about determination. What's determination? Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you've started. Listen, we've all used determination at some point in our life. How about this week? Tell me if this sounds familiar. Your mom or your dad ask you to do your homework this week and you reply, mom, dad, it's not even graded. Does it even count? Come on, just let me sleep in or, or play my Nintendo Switch. Just let me watch YouTube for crying out loud. I wonder if that has been you this week. And I know you really don't wanna do your homework. Some of it may even be optional, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do it, right? You've, you've gotta use a little determination to get it done. You've gotta decide that it's worth it to finish what you've started and to finish out this school year well. Now, having a ton of homework can sometimes make you feel kinda of stuck, but determination can get us unstuck. So in today's lesson, we're gonna learn about how God can actually help us get unstuck too. So let's check out today's story. Hi everyone, we're picking up God's big story after Jesus had died on the cross and come back to life. Now the disciples had seen some amazing things things in the time they had followed Jesus. They saw him perform miracles, like healing blind people and bringing Lazarus back to life. How awesome is that? They saw crowds gathered around Jesus to hear his teaching. And some of them actually heard the voice of God declare, this is my son and I love him. While the disciples had experienced some great things, they had also seen some sad things. They were there when the religious leaders tried to kill Jesus. They were there when one of their friends named Judas betrayed him. And they saw Jesus get arrested and put on trial. They also saw Jesus die on the cross and be buried in a tomb. And now that was the saddest day of all. The disciples thought it was all over, but there was still more to the story. Jesus did the impossible. Jesus rose from the dead and came back to life. The disciples were actually there to experience the greatest miracle of all time. Now in the, back of, in the book of Matthew, we see how Jesus told his disciples to go to a mountain in Galilee. The disciples didn't know why Jesus wanted them to go to the mountain or what would happen once they were there. But you know what? They trusted Jesus and they did what he said. So the disciples go up to this mountain in Galilee and bam, Jesus appears. Now to tell you what happened next, I thought I'd get the help from some of our amazing FC Kids leaders to do some Bible story charades. Okay, here's how this is gonna work. I've already given our FC Kids volunteers the charade I need them to act out. But the key is they can't say anything that they're acting out. They can only act. And you're going to have to guess what they're acting out. You guys up for the challenge? Okay, so when I play the video of the leader acting out an important part of the story, I want you to give me all the guesses you got, okay? If, if you get the answer correct, I want you to give yourself a good old fashioned self high five or a good old fashioned pat on the back. You guys got it? That's if you get it right, okay? No cheating, okay. So here's what happened next. Remember, they were going up to a mountain in Galilee and when you begin guessing what this charade is, I want you screaming so loud the neighbors can hear you, okay? Because who doesn't love to scream, right? We wanna, we wanna get the people in the house woken up if they're not already awake, okay? So here's what happened next. All right, let's see if any of you got it correct. If you guessed worship, you got it correct. And now you guys remember what to do, right? The good old fashioned self high five or a good old fashioned pat on the back, okay? So here's what happened next. The Bible says in Matthew 28, 17, when they saw him, when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him, but some still had their doubts. Now the disciples had seen Jesus do all of those amazing things, but for some of them, it still was too good to be true. 
It was still too good to be true that he could actually have risen from the dead. Jesus knew what was in their hearts. And listen to what he told them. He said in Matthew 28, 18, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And you see, Jesus wanted to remind his friends that he is the son of God. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is impossible for him. But he didn't stop there. He gave the disciples a new mission. And I'm gonna get another FC Kids volunteer to act out what Jesus commanded, okay? So for this charade, I have part of the new job that Jesus gave to his followers, okay? Remember, don't forget to guess. You guys ready? Let's see your guesses. What'd you guys guess? Let me hear it. What'd you guys guess? Let me hear it. What do you think he was doing? That's right. Jesus told his disciples to be teachers. He wanted them to tell everyone about him, everyone. And here's what Jesus said in Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. He said this right here. So you must go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. Whoa, that's a big job. Telling all the nations about Jesus. And the disciples were just a small group of people. How would they be able to tell the whole world about what Jesus had done? They must have wondered how they could possibly even begin this impossible mission. Jesus' followers returned to Jerusalem. One day, Jesus led them to a hill outside the city near Bethany. This is just a city. It's a hill outside the city near Bethany. Now I'm going to get someone to act out what happened next. But remember, they were on a big hill. Like I'm talking a round hill with some fresh cut, soft grass that is the pristine spot to roll down. You guys, you guys all have something in mind. So think about that. So here's what happened on the hill. All right, what'd you guys guess? What's your final guess is? Let me hear it, let me hear it. That's right. On that day, Jesus was eating a meal with the disciples. Now, if you got that one right, you know what to do. Give yourself a good old fashioned self high five or pat on the back. Now, explaining that Jesus was eating with his disciples might seem like an odd detail to include in the Bible. Yeah, there, I get that. But it shows us that Jesus was really alive. They weren't dreaming. Jesus was really back from the dead, living, breathing, and even eating like you and me. How awesome is that? And now Jesus told them that very soon, God was going to do something special for them. He promised them a gift. Now, this isn't the type of gift you're probably thinking of. It wasn't wrapped in a big box with an awesome little bow attached to the top. Nope, it was the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised the disciples that God would give them a gift, a gift that would help them accomplish their big mission of telling the world about him. Now listen to the words of Jesus in Acts 1, verses four through five. He says, do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised. You have heard me talk about it. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus went on to say this in Acts 1. He said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. And you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. Now to tell you what happened next, I'm gonna use one more volunteer, okay? After Jesus told the disciples they would soon have the help of the Holy Spirit, something amazing happened. And my good friend Parker is gonna act this out for us, okay? So here's what happened after Jesus told the disciples that they would soon have the help of the Holy Spirit. Also. Don't forget to give me those guesses, okay? All 
All right, what's your final guess is? Let me hear it, let me hear it. If you guessed that Jesus went up to heaven, you got it right. Now give yourself a good old fashioned self high five or a good old fashioned pat on the back, okay? Now this, this is what it says in the book of Acts. The apostles watched until a cloud hid him from their sight. Then suddenly two men dressed in white clothing stood beside the disciples. These men were angels. The angels asked the disciples why they were just standing there watching the sky. They're like, what the heck just happened? After all, the disciples had a job to do. People needed to hear about what Jesus had done and it was time to get started. And there's one more part of the story today. And this time, yours truly is gonna act it out, okay? Here we go. Let me see if you can guess out what I'm acting, okay? Ready? What'd you guys guess that I was doing? What's your final answer? Let me hear them. Let's hear them. Yell at the TV as loud as you can. Right. Jesus had told the disciples to wait in Jerusalem because soon God would be sending the Holy Spirit to help them. So that's what they did. They waited. And Jesus had given his followers what seemed to be an impossible job. He had told them to share his story and his love with every nation across the entire world. The disciples had no idea where to start, but Jesus promised he would send a gift to help them. So they waited in Jerusalem for the Holy Spirit to come. They trusted that God would give them exactly what they needed to begin their impossible mission. Now, here's the really cool part. Jesus has given us the same mission that he gave the disciples. He wants us to tell others about him. We are all part of his big story. We're continuing the work that the disciples began. And we know that God will help us keep going even when it seems impossible. And that leads me to my bottom line today. Keep going even when it seems impossible. Let's thank God for using us to share the great news about Jesus. Everybody bow your heads and close your eyes with me. God, thank you so much for sending your son to die on the cross for us. Thank you so much for not leaving us here alone and giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, we pray that you will help us have determination and do what's right and to keep doing it even when it gets hard, God. We trust you and we love you. And it's in your name we pray, amen. Wow, what an incredible story. You know, it must have seemed impossible for the disciples to do what Jesus had told them to do. I mean, how could they get his message out all over the world? Sometimes things seem impossible for us too. But when things seem impossible, we can remember that God is always with us. We can trust Him no matter what. From the beginning, God has a plan, had a plan to rescue us. And that's why He sent Jesus. Jesus knew that He would eventually going to have to leave us. You know, He he was gonna have to leave His disciples behind. And He died. He came back alive again and He gave His friends a mission. He gave them a promise. Jesus told them that He would send a helper, the Holy Spirit. You know, with the help of the Spirit, the disciples could find the determination they needed to share the good news about Jesus. And we can continue their mission today. Just like the disciples, we can keep going when it seems impossible. Remember, God is always with you and He can do impossible things. It might feel impossible to learn all of your spelling words for school this week. Remember that God can do things that seem impossible. You just have to pray and you have to ask Him for help. Maybe you've had a a fight with a friend and it seems impossible that you will ever make up. Well, remember that God can do things that seem impossible. So pray for help and make the first move to tell your friend that you're sorry. Pray, trust God, and keep going even when it seems impossible. And parents, we're gonna be talking about determination all month long. And we hope that you will continue the conversation this month too. You can find helpful resources such as our weekly devotional guide at foothillschurch.com slash online content. Also, don't forget to join our new SC Kids Parent Facebook group. Just go to Facebook and search for our FC Kids Parents Group. We'd love to connect with you and hear your thoughts on what we can do to make this experience even better. 
We love you guys. We miss you all. We cannot wait to be back together with our FC family. We'll see you back here online next week.